This is amazing. So I'm humbled to be here. I'm your brother, and I came to release the roar on the inside of you. Praise God. Any lions up in here? You may be seated. I got to get started. Y'all are not going to do that to me. Not going to do it to me. And I asked the Lord to say, how can I go in here and build this house? How can I get, get them to keep the roar? And he said, it's not about them keeping the roar. It's about you making them more of a lion. Because lions roar. And so this is the year that whatever God has destined for your life, this is the year you get it. Somebody shout amen to that. No more hoping and wishing and no, I'm going to walk in it. Romans 12, I want you to go there because I want to encourage those of you in this second service to go back and listen to the first service this week. Please go back and listen to it because I laid a foundation that I don't have the time to go back to. I'm just going to jump right in and, and, and pick up where I left off. But it's out of Romans 12 verses number 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and, and, which means this is, in, this is in conjunction. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transformation comes by the renewing of your mind. And here's for the purpose, that you may prove, that is the Greek word, which means to discern or to test or to approve what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God? And I've been focusing on that phrase, the B clause in verse number two, and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transform is the Greek word metamorphos. And it means to change forms or to shift from one form into another form and so I've been talking to you about the metamorphosis just say this after me I'm changing come on change. I'm changing no longer will you fight it after today after today you won't fight change you will embrace change after today you got to change if you're going to see the will of God. So we talked about three things. The purpose for metamorphosis. It is to bring something from immaturity into maturity. In other words, the reason it requires a metamorphosis in the greatest metamorphosis we know of is that from a caterpillar to a butterfly. There are other insects that go through metamorphosis, but some of them only go through half metamorphosis, which means you have the ants and you have all of those. They go through metamorphosis, but they, but they go through something called hemimetabolos, which means it's not a complete transformation. It's just a half transformation. So we can't preach about them because we can't preach about nothing that goes through half of a transformation because you, you get to keep some of the old with that. What the Bible is talking about is a complete transformation, a, a complete metamorphosis where you shift forms and the Spirit of God began to deal with me earlier this year about some of the things he wanted to do in my life and I came to the realization that the moment he spoke those things to me that I did not have the capacity to handle them. Now you might as well be honest with God because you can fake people but you can't fake. You can't fake God. He, he knows what you're able to handle but what he does is he gives you vision. Everybody say vision, vision, vision. He gives you things to chase that are in his will for your life that at the moment he speaks them 
Most in general, you're not able to handle them. But he does it in hopes that it would provoke you into change. And so he spoke to me and he says, Isaac, I would never tell you to be ye transformed if there were not other forms in you. Which means the Isaac that you are now is not all you were created to be. That there is a whole nother form in me. And I look back over my life and I can see ages and stages in my life that I shed it skins. I, I can look back at stuff that I thought was foolish and, and, and I didn't think it made sense, but now I can perceive it and I understand it better. And I perceive it. And Paul said it like this when I was a child. Oh, yeah. He says, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things, which means becoming is not automatic. There's a process I have to come to. And how many of you right now, when you were a child growing up and your parent had you do things and had you, had you um, um, they're working on things and going through all these types of rules and regulations and none of that made sense to you. You kicked against it. You fought it. You did not like it. You fussed. You got whipped for it. You got beat for it because you could not see it because you were in an immature state but now that you are grown and you have kids the same thing they did to you you're doing to your children because it makes sense now not when I was a child but when I became a man <laughs> now I understand it and what's what I came to tell you see this is this is why some of you have to shift you have to shift because there are things and people you are fighting right now who are wired for your future. <sighs> See, some of you really don't want pastors and mentors. You want friends and sister girls. You want people who will let you stay where you're at. But when God sends somebody into your life, you know they're sent by God when they force you to change forms. I don't need nobody helping me stay hateful when I'm hateful. I don't need nobody agreeing with me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here. I came to tell you God is about to force a form out of you and it's coming out whether you want it or not. Why? Because he's got too much for your life. You've got to shift. You've got to shift. You, you've got to transform. And so the Bible talks about the purpose for the transformation. That's what I talked about in the first service, but I don't have time to go back to that. Now we go to the process of transformation because this is what I have found out about people. People really do want to change. If you're born again, there ain't no such thing as you don't want to do better. Wait a minute, y'all making me nervous. I say there is no such thing as you being born again and don't have a want, a desire to do better. I don't believe that. I believe people really do want to be free. I don't believe that anybody wants to be addicted. I don't believe anybody wants to be perverted. I don't believe anybody wants to be bound. I don't believe anybody wants to be a criminal. I'm talking about if you've been born again. For the very fact that you're born again, which means now what I used to desire in sin is now repulsive in me. See, this is why Paul says, I find a law in me that when I would do good, evil is present in me. And he said, oh, wretched man that I am. See, that's how you know you're saved. Because before you were saved, you would sin and wouldn't even have no conscience. 
But now when you get born again and you mess up, you be like, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that means there's some in me saying we don't do that no more. And there's some in me fighting what's in me because there's some in me that won't let me keep doing what I used to do because there's another me in me that can't stand me being what I used to be. I'm talking about transformation. I'm talking about some people that's ready to shift some things in their being. And so he says, you must go through the metamorphosis. And that's the issue. It's not that people don't want to change. It's that they don't want to go through the metamorphosis that it takes to change. Because the caterpillar goes through a grueling process. Uh, everybody say process, process. It goes through a grueling process in order to manifest what it was created to be. Yeah. So let me take you through the process because I'm about to preach your 24. This is what you're about to go through because God's about to pull an updated, upgraded version of yourself out of you. So tap somebody and tell them, say, I'm about to shift on you. I'm about to transform now. I'm about to transform now. The process, the process, the process is that the thing is born, it's born a worm. It's born a worm, but it's got wings in it. And you can't see it, but the wings are in the worm. He doesn't get to jump the process. He has to go through an internal in which the change that it's about to make won't just be surface, but it's going to be cellular. Oh my God. Which means it's not just going to look different at the end. It's going to be different at, oh my God, I don't, I don't want to mess with nobody, but, but this is the issue. Some of you want to look blessed, you want to look delivered, you want to look healed, you want to look prosperous, you want to look free. But this is not about looking at it. I ain't got time for that no more. Because looking like it don't mean I am like it. I want to be changed from the inside out of me so that what I look like on the outside is what I am on the inside. Yeah, yeah, people trying to look like it, that's imitation. God's not into imitation. He's into transformation. And I'm telling you, God's about to do it in such a way, you ain't going to have to fake it. You're going to actually have the money. You ain't going to have to fake it. you actually going to be at peace. You ain't going to have to fake it. you actually going to have joy. You ain't going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. I'm going to go through it until I become it. Be seated, please. So he goes through this metamorphosis. This is amazing because I found so much revelation that if God wants me to go through a metamorphosis, this is what I have to do. And the first thing is that it is born a worm. It's crawling on the ground. But God put something in the caterpillar that's amazing, and that is an insatiable appetite. Which means at this stage of immaturity, where it is born a worm, it has one of ferocious, ferocious thing about it. It loves to eat. It loves to eat because it knows that what I am ain't all I is. And the only way out of this form is to outgrow it. Oh. oh my God! 
no, no. He knows the only way out of it is I got to outgrow it. I got to outgrow it. I got to outgrow it. Can't nobody take me out of it. I got to grow out of it. I got to grow out of it. See, this is why you can come to the altar and have enough oil slung on you to be greased up like a piece of Kentucky fried chicken but it ain't gonna ever get you free because God didn't destined for anybody to be able to lay hands on you and get you free. That'll only last for a moment. But he said, you shall know the truth. Uh, yeah, uh, not a prayer line, but the truth. And if you know the truth, watch this. It won't set you free. It'll make you free. Because anything set free can be bound again. But anything made free, it's over, baby. You can't put that back on me. Because what used to work on me at one time, I've outgrown it this time. Oh, I'm trying to tell you, get ready. You're about to outgrow some stuff this year. But in order to do it, you're going to have to eat. Look at somebody say, you're going to have to eat. 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 And this is why most people never transform. Because they don't eat. He just eats leaves and leaves and leaves and leaves and leaves and eats 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 until it starts to outgrow its skin. See, this is why some people can sit at church and then there are some people that can sit at the house. This is why there are some people who have to come to church and then some people who just pick when they come. Because people who ain't trying to shift don't see the necessity of having to have the word. But there are people trying to get to the next level that when you get the phone call, it's snowing outside, you're telling them, that don't mean nothing to me. Stay at the house if you want to, but I'm trying to shift into another dimension and I got to get to the house and eat. I got to meditate on the word. Day and night, I got to have it. I got to have it on Sunday. I got to have it on Monday. I got to have it on Wednesday. I got to have it. I got to be meditating on it when I get up, meditating on it when I lay down. I got to have the word. Because the word is my only hope of outgrowing my immaturity. <laughs> People stay small because they don't eat. And he eats and he eats. The caterpillar just eats and eats until it starts to outgrow its skin. It eats itself out of a capacity. Woo-wee! Which means it eats itself out of a level. It eats and eats to the point where what it is can no longer contain what it's born to be. I'm trying to make sure you catch that. He eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and then he eats till he starts to almost pop and then he starts a molting process. <laughs> which means he starts shedding hair and shedding certain things that he needed for one season. After he's ate so much, the things he needed in an immature state just started falling off of him. He doesn't even have to make them fall off. He gets to a state where it can't stay on him. It just sheds off of him. 
See, when I read this verse, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me of Isaiah chapter number 10 when it says, and he shall, his burden shall be removed of, off your shoulders, his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. All my life when I preached that, I thought that the anointing just comes and obliterates a yoke. Just snaps it right off your neck. And then I read anointing in that verse. And that word for anointing in that verse, the literal Hebrew says, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the fatness. It's speaking of increase. Which means the anointing doesn't come just to give you chills and thrills and feels. It doesn't come just to make you fall out on the floor. It comes to increase you to the point where yokes won't fit no more. So when they had two oxen, they would put a yoke on the oxen so that they could keep them tied together. And then they would make the yoke just big enough to fit around the neck of the oxen. But then if the oxen keep eating and keep eating and keep growing and keep growing, then all of a sudden they get too big for the current yoke to fit back around the same two necks. Which means God says, I want to increase you to the point where what used to fit you does not fit you anymore. And you can tell the devil, if you want me now, you got to come up with something different because the same old mess that you used to use to tie me down, it ain't tying me down no more. I've outgrown all of that now. You can't use the same old issues. You can't use the same old temptations. You can't use, I'm too fat for that. Look at somebody say, this is when you need to be fat. This is when you need to be fat. I, I'm too big now. I'm, I'm too grown now. I've got too much power now. So the yoke is destroyed because it just won't fit. <laughs> Some of you can't shout because you've been dealing with the same devil since 1995. You've been dealing with the same issues since 2006. But do I have anybody in here that knows what it's like to outgrow something where it just don't fit no more? You can call me, but right now you just don't fit no more. You can try that on me, but it don't work no more. I've outgrown all of that because when, when, when I told you when I was a child, I spake and I thought and I understood, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is the year where the Lord says, I refuse to allow you to stay small. I'm about to increase your thinking. I'm about to renew you to a way that nothing that used to work on you will work again. Woo, clap your hands for that. This is the purpose for transformation. So he eats himself out of his body. And it is at that moment after he has eaten himself out of this stage that he begins to go through metamorphosis. And in the metamorphosis, he goes and spins this chrysalis. Sometimes people refer to it as a cocoon. And he goes into hiding. He goes into secrecy. <laughs> I'm explaining what's about to happen to you. Because he's about to go through an environment shift that's needed for transformation. 
And so now he walls, and I'll just refer to it as a he. He walls himself off from the elements. And I used to always think that they spun that chrysalis so that it would protect them because they're about to go through a vulnerable state. And that's good because it does. But it's not just for protection. It's also for restriction. Because what, is it, what it's about to go through, it needs something that can hold it together until the process is completed. Because what's about to happen on the inside of this chrysalis is a dying. It's got to die. It's got to leave one form and let it go. It's got to say goodbye to the worm. Which means when I spin this around me, I'm saying to myself, I'm at the point of no return. I cannot go back to what I used to be. And I remember earlier, 15 years ago or so, I was preaching this on a metamorphosis. And I preached it, though, not from a caterpillar to a butterfly. I preached it talking about the Incredible Hulk. Because I grew up, you know, come on now. Oh, some of y'all don't know nothing about no Bruce Manor. You don't know nothing about the Incredible Hulk. But I preached it, I mean, I preached it with all of my heart. And I talked about this scientist, this brilliant man, Bruce Banner, who was a scientist. And he was, you know, um, doing an experiment with some gamma rays. And then he got hit with a high dose of these gamma rays. And when he got hit with a high dose of these gamma rays, whenever he would have an emotional imbalance, when he would get upset, when he would get triggered, he would turn into this big old green thing that had supernatural power and ability. And I was preaching and I was preaching it good. And I talked about how you're about to go from supernatural in from natural into supernatural and what you didn't have the power to do at one stage you're gonna have the power to do at another stage and yeah you're mild and meek and mannered as a man but when I come up under the anointing I turn into something that can leap tall building oh, I was preaching good I was, I was preaching that thing I was preaching that thing I went back home and the spirit of the Lord tapped me on the shoulder you know how the Lord does some of you preachers know and he says Isaac you meant well, son, but you preached that wrong. I say, what you mean, Lord? He says, you meant well. He says, but, but you can't preach a, a metamorphosis from Bruce Banner in the Incredible Hulk. I say, wait a minute. What, what were you talking about? The man went from this. Then he changed in this big old green thing and all of that. He said, that's not a metamorphosis. He says, yes, he did. He changed from one form into another form. But the reason it's not a metamorphosis is because the moment his temper subsides, he goes right on back to what he used to. And he said, anything you can get back from, you ain't transformed. Oh, my God. Would you look at somebody and tell them, I ain't going back after today. In other words, the Lord is about to get me into a dimension in which I can never get back from. I ain't going back, thinking back, looking back. I am not going back. Because once this caterpillar turns into a butterfly, <laughs> it can never go back. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, where are my single women in here? Single men in here. Wave your hand. Wave your hand. Can I prophesy to you? Because I'm believing God for this for some people in my life. Are you hear me? Are you sure you want God's will for you? You sure you want it to show up this year? Are you sure? Because if I decree this over you, there can't be no going back. 
And see, that's what God's been waiting on. He says, I got my wheel over here ready for you, but you keep playing with the worms down there and don't understand I got a butterfly for you. But you keep going back and being pulled back. Anybody shout, I'm not going back. I'm not going back to addiction. I'm not going back. God's going to do something in me this year where I can't get back. And so, be seated, please. Be seated. Be seated, please. I got to let y'all go. I got to let you go. I got 36 seconds. That ain't going to work, is it? Pastor Eric, I'm finna try. And so he goes back, he goes, he eats, and now inside of this chrysalis, he's got to die. And this is amazing because inside the butterfly are these things called juvenile hormones. Juvenile, like juvenile. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. It has juvenile hormones. They are the hormones in the caterpillar that resist the transformation from happening prematurely. Which means these are the hormones that protect the worm. So that it doesn't prematurely trigger transformation into the butterfly. They're there to hold back the hormones and cells from triggering in the butterfly until they have grown out of juvenile state. Which means God says, as long as your juvenile hormones are still dominant in your life, The caterpillar can't fake that. They will be there until he grows into metamorphosis. They're there to make sure the wings don't start developing. Because if it starts early and the juvenile hormones are still there, then you won't have transform, you'll have deform. <laughs> you would have a mixture of some Old stuff popping up in new stuff and some new. You don't want no worm with a wing sticking out. I better quit. Let me close my Bible. And so, and so, it's amazing that the moment it grows to the point of transformation, though, the juvenile hormones start self destructing. Nobody has to cause the process. They just start decreasing. And it's the decrease of the juvenile hormones that yield to this, this enzyme in it called caspasis. I'm not a scientist. I'm just a preacher. You understand? <laughs> Which means there are certain things in it that won't even kick in until other things die. I want you to get a prophetic face on you. Look at somebody with a prophetic face. Come on, look at them like you're a preacher and tell them, kill it, kill it, kill it. Kill it, kill it. The juvenile, kill it. The immature, kill it, kill it, kill it. Can't nothing of adolescence go into this next season with you. Watch this. Watch this. And so, uh-oh. Woo! Somebody gonna take off running. Watch this. And so the moment these enzymes die, I mean these hormones die, then this caspasis enzyme kicks in and it starts literally digesting itself. 
picking its old form up, dissolving it and disintegrating it. See, that's how you know you're reaching maturity because you no longer need a prayer line to deal with your stuff. There was a place where I needed pastor and I needed Pastor Kim and I needed Pastor Blake and I needed people to lay hands on me. But now I've grown to the point where I can deal with it myself. I came to the conclusion that I had enough of it. I came to the conclusion that it's got to go. Okay, five more minutes and I gotta go so I can be invited back. So now it goes through this death process of the old form and it is totally disintegrated. It is totally annihilated. All of the genes of the caterpillar are dissolved and now on the inside it's nothing but this gook. It looks like nothing. It's reduced but it's inside of this chrysalis so no one can see what's going on because when you're going through this stage of transformation you don't get to be seen. Because if people saw you in this grueling process, and some of you would even try to escape it, except you're wrapped up in it now. You didn't ate yourself into a state where it's going to happen one way or the other. Which means you reached the point where you say, I'm so sick of myself, I can't be what I used to be. So I ain't got no choice but to just go on in. And so now, out of this muck comes these, these cells. Looks like nothing. I'm preaching what you're about to go through. And these cells are called imaginal cells. Which means, imaginal cells, which means they are the cells of the new image. The new image cells start to appear out of this gooey muck. And the antenna cells start being activated. The wing cells start being activated. And everything starts being activated. The new cells start forming. And they are so unique that God wired them that the cells know which cells to connect with in order to form the new identity. All of the leg cells get together. All, <laughs> all of the antenna cells get together. All of the color cells, the wing cells. And on the inside of this, God is forming this thing, but he won't let it out yet because the first thing it does before it pops out, God says, I got to make sure before I put the wings on you and the colors on you, before I present you, I've got to first build an exoskeleton. Which means the first thing God does to it, and let me prophesy to you, is he builds a structure in it that makes it have the capacity to handle what God's going to put on it. Which means you don't get to come out of here looking good. He says, I'm going to change your structure. And this is not just an endoskeleton. That's what we have, which means we have a skeleton on the inside of flesh. This is an exoskeleton, which means the actual skeletal, the actual skeletal body is the body. Which means this thing is on the outside protecting everything on the inside and its whole body is built to handle the wings and it comes when it's time for maturity let me prophesy to you it breaks itself out of the chrysalis with brand new everything ain't nothing like it used to be it's got new eyes 
Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. It's got new senses. It's got a new body. It's got new wings. It's got a new mouth. Everything is new. And I came to tell you, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. For I will do a new thing in you this year. And I came to tell you to get ready. Everybody standing, watch this. It comes out with a new appetite. God even changes the butterfly's mouth. Oh boy, wish I had time. Where even if it wanted to eat leaves, it couldn't consume them no more. Because he changed that into transformation. His mouth is no longer made to eat wings. Now it's built to suck nectar. <laughs> and it does all of that for one reason. Goes through that whole process for one reason. Reproduction. Which means there are no reproductive organs in the caterpillar. Because God don't want it duplicated. But the moment it becomes a butterfly, God says, now be fruitful and multiply. And I came to tell you, some of you been thinking way too small. This next blessing that's about to hit your life, it ain't about you. This is about your children and your children's children. This is about cities and states and nations. He's about to do something in you that's going to be pressed down, shaken together, and running Touch somebody and say, get ready to multiply, multiply. Now everything you do is going to multiply. Everything you're going to do is increase. Everything you do now is going to be blessed. Everything you do now come in 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. This is the year I get exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask. Or Let me hear that lion roar out of you. Yeah, yeah. Announce to your future that a brand new transformed person is on its way. Yeah. 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 Touch somebody and say, fly now. Fly now. Fly now. You ain't crawling no more. You're not a worm no more. You into the next dimension. Now you got joy and peace and righteousness and love. I'm not a child. I'm not a baby. I'm ready to handle the next level of anointing. I'm ready to handle the next dimension of blessing. I'm I got to go. I'm sorry, Pastor. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. Demons are screaming right now. Why? Because what they used to do in you, it's not going to work no more. You're not going to fall for it no more. You're not going to succumb to it no more. There is a you in you God says next level for you lift your hands next level for you I've got so much I've got in store for you but I've been waiting on you to grow up I've been waiting on the next form of you Can I tell you there ain't nothing wrong with that marriage? 
except y'all need to quit being worms. And grow up. There's another man in you. There's another man in you. You don't have to stay bound. You don't have to stay addicted. You don't have to stay in fear and intim intimidation. There's another form in you. And I came to tell you, get ready for an atmosphere, environment, altitude change. Get ready for new relationships and new connections. The, rela the relationships you have as a worm are not the same you need as a butterfly. This is why you don't make permanent decisions in temporary situations. Because what you needed when you were broken is not what you need when you're whole. And some of you, I just want to give you the permission to quit apologizing for changing. I'm not apologizing. Yeah, I outgrew it. That's not what I want anymore. I don't want no more leaves. I want nectar. If it ain't sweet, if it ain't pleasant. And they get together and they reproduce as butterflies. It's not for you to get self-righteous. It's not for you to look down at other people and be like, you ain't on my level. It's just that you've been through the process and you know now that I've arrived at a butterfly, I ain't hating on you. I used to be there. But until you outgrow that, me and you can't have no. Because I can't come down. I can't, I can't come up. Oh, I can't come down. Touch somebody and say, don't go down. I, uh, no, I can't come back down. And pastor, please forgive me. I try so hard to honor the time. I really do. But I decree over your life, lift your hands and receive it. Blake's going to sing over us. And I want you to get this in your spirit. That this is the year to kill it. The things that are holding you back from your destiny, your purpose, and from the next level and the things that God has for you. I don't want you to just shout about it. I don't want you to just talk about it. I want you to have everything God has for you. And he says, my will goes to the transformers. My will goes to the people who are able to change and keep changing and keep growing and keep developing until they come into a mature state of what I've created them to be. And once you become it, You'll see things manifest in your life that will literally boggle your mind.